We fought a nearly year-long battle with a virus that has devastated this nation. It's brought us pain and loss and frustration. And it's cost so many lives. 260,000 Americans and counting. It's divided us, angered us, set us against one another. I know the country has grown weary of the fight. But we need to remember we're at war with the virus, not with one another, not with each other. This is the moment where we need to steel our spines, redouble our efforts, and recommit ourselves to the fight. Let's remember, we're all in this together. Sounds trite to say it, but we're all in this together. For so many of us, it's hard to hear this fight isn't over. And we still have months of this battle ahead of us. For those who've lost a loved one, I know that this time of year can be especially difficult. Believe me, I know. I remember that first Thanksgiving, the empty chair, the silence, takes your breath away. It's really hard to care. It's hard to give thanks. It's hard to even think of looking forward. And it's so hard to hope. I understand. I'll be thinking and praying for each and every one of you at this Thanksgiving, at your Thanksgiving table, because we've been there. This year, we're asking Americans to forego so many of the traditions that we've long made in this holiday, which made it so special. For our families, for 40 such years, 40 some years, we've had a tradition of traveling over Thanksgiving. Tradition that we've kept every year save one, the year our son Bo died. But this year, we'll be staying home. We've always had a big family gatherings at Thanksgiving. Kids, grandkids, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, and more. For the Bidens, the days around Thanksgiving have always been a time to remember all we had to be grateful for and a time to begin to think about Christmas and begin even to do the Christmas list. But this year, because we care so much for each other, we're going to be having a separate Thanksgiving. For Jill and I, we'll be at our home in Delaware with our daughter and our son-in-law. The rest of the family will be doing the same thing in small groups. So I know. I know how hard it is to forego family traditions, but it's so very important. Our country is in the middle of a dramatic spike in cases. We're now averaging 160,000 new cases a day. And no one will be surprised if we hit 200,000 cases in a single day. Many local health systems are at risk of being overwhelmed. That's the plain and simple truth. Nothing made up. It's real. And I believe you always deserve to hear the truth, hear the truth from your president. We have to try to slow the growth of this virus. We owe it to the doctors and the nurses and other frontline workers, care workers, who've risked their lives, some lost their lives, put so much on the line in a heroic battle in this virus against it for so long. You know, we owe that to our fellow citizens who need access to hospital beds and care to fight this disease. We owe it to one another. It's literally our patriotic duty as Americans. It means wearing a mask, keeping social distancing, limiting the size of any group we're in. Until we have a vaccine, these are the most effective tools to combat the virus. Starting on day one of my presidency, we will take steps that will change the course of this disease. More testing will find people with cases and get them away from one another, slowing the number of infections. More protective gear for businesses and our schools to do the same, reducing the number of cases. Clear guidance will get more businesses and more schools open. We all have a role to play in 
beating this crisis. The federal government has vast powers to combat the virus. And I commit to you, I will use all of those powers to lead a national coordinated response. But, but, the federal government can't do this alone. Each of us has a responsibility in our own lives to do what we can do to slow the virus. Every decision we make matters. Every decision we make can save lives. None of these steps we're asking people to take are political statements. Every one of them is based on science, real science. Now, the good news is there has been significant record-breaking progress made recently in developing a vaccine. And several of these vaccines look extraordinarily effective. And it happens that we're on track for the first immunization to begin by late December, early January. Then we'll need to put in place a distribution plan to get the entire country immunized as soon as possible, which we will do. But it's going to take time. I'm hoping the news of the vaccine will serve as an incentive to every American to take these simple steps to get control of the virus. Thank <laughs> you.